Okay, so welcome to a Pine Tribe interview. Today we're interviewing uh, Robert Symington, who escaped his corporate job and co-founded Escape the City, as well as co-wrote the Escape Manifesto, teaching us all how to escape the, the prison of corporate life, uh, as well as Pine Tribe co-founder Martin Biagol, who's also the co-author of Winning Without Losing, which teaches us how to balance our work life and just be, have a happier experience in our startup companies and as entrepreneurs. Thanks, Philip. And please allow me to start with a, a small fact about Scandinavia, as we always do here in, in these interviews. I would like to tell you all that in uh, Denmark, education is completely free. Uh, even going to the university and taking a master degree is free. You even get money uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to go there. And um, I think a lot of people actually know that nowadays, but what a lot of, uh, ha haven't thought about is the implications of that. And that actually means that in Denmark, it's, uh, it's quite normal for parents not to push their kids to get the highest grades possible, but instead to have more of a focus on that also the kids enjoy themselves and have a broad perspective on lives and kind of develop as whole people, <laughs> not just uh, going for the grades. And that is a quite different, uh, quite big difference from a lot of other countries, including actually, I would say, the UK and the US. So at least I've had a lot of heated discussions with, uh, with both Brits and Americans around this topic, because uh, I often meet the, 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 the viewpoint that as a parent, you have an obligation to press your kids uh, to, uh, for high grades. And, and we actually look very different from, uh, on that. And I think that's because education here is a, is a luxury uh, that's for everyone. So that's a small, uh, small piece of information about the, the Danish culture. <laughs> yeah, and it's a very important piece, I would say. I think it's very useful for the uh, Danish population to come up. It's very educated, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Robert, I'm going to start in asking you uh, a big question that we like to ask here at Pine Tribe, and that is, what is, what is your big message for the world? Um, I think probably... My main message is very related to Escape the City, which is obviously a massive part of my identity. And it can be summarized as, I don't think you um, have to experience the world the way that people expect you to. And you don't have to li live the life that you feel like potentially you're, you're set up to live. And it's something that I've fought myself and come to a sort of conclusion on. And, and that would be my main message. That's, that's very good. I would say... Um, as we were talking about the education before, people, people really are learning from a young age that they, they have these abilities to do whatever they want. There's free flow of information everywhere. You can access the world through your pocket. Mm. Then why do people still end up in jobs that they don't like? Well, you know, I think there's some good reasons and some bad reasons. Um, uh, the good reasons are if you're a conscientious, ambitious person and you get the grades, like Philip, like Martin was just saying, <laughs> you get the grades, you graduate from university, certainly in the UK, you probably have some debt, some student debt, and you're thinking, well, here I am, I'm inexperienced, I need to cut my teeth in the working world, and wouldn't it be great if I could earn an all right salary whilst doing that? Now, I mean, that was the path that I took and many of my peers and colleagues and escape members. And the thing is, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. The, the problem is, is when you kind of make a passive decision or no decision at all, you just follow the travelator, run into the corporate world, um, you know, the milk crown comes to your university, they pitch you on the corporate jobs. I think the problem is when five years later you wake up and say, hang on, how did I get here? Um, so on to the sort of potentially the reasons which aren't so admirable that, that mean you end up in this environment that you then wake up one day, 28, 30, 38, however old, and say, what am I doing here? And I think that's because through our education and, and through society, we're taught to fit in. We're not taught to stand out, take risks. People who love you, the people who love you the most don't want you to take risks because they want you to be okay. Um, and I think the negative corollary of that is that people follow the crowd, myself included. You say, well, okay, so where are all the other people who are at my level, my, my grades going? I'm going to go there too. No, I think that's great. In your book, you talk about the travelator a bit, and right. it's very shocking to think all of a sudden you're standing there, and all of a sudden you're at the end of the line, and you're like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> me? Yeah, exactly. This this is not what I'd hope for." Well, and you, your movement has actually gotten a lot of <clears throat> a lot of momentum and traction, Rob. Uh, I noticed on your website that you have one hundred thirty-four thousand uh, subscribers to your newsletter. 
Uh, can you tell us a bit about what 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 is it? Uh, how is it you help these people? Okay, Why do so they come to you, and, and and what do you you know do for them? So I mean, so we're still very much a startup and trying to build our products in terms of how we help people. And uh, crazy as it sounds, but I think the first thing that we help people with is hope. Um, uh, although my business partners wouldn't want me to say that, but um, hope, um, validation that you're not alone, that you're not mad, you're not the only person who feels this way. Then obviously we try and help people in more tangible ways. We figure if you're going to escape your corporate job, you're going to do three things. You're either going to find another job, start your own thing, or go on a big adventure. Now the adventure is probably the least sustainable of those. The new job is the most sustainable. We try and help people through a combination of a tr a more of a transactional way of showing them opportunities that they wouldn't have found without us, and then in some more um, educational ways and connecting them with each other through communicating information that will empower them to make these big transitions in their lives. And, and on your site, you do show a lot of potential job opportunities. What, what would you say these job opportunities are? Are they the, the great jobs and what constitutes a great job? Yeah, it's very subjective. So um, when we started Escape the City, you know, it was Rob and Dom decided what they thought was cool. Um, so the, the, the five escape factors, if you will, that we work to are entrepreneurial, positive social impact, exciting brand, adventurous challenge, and exotic location. Now, I mean, I guess we could sit down over a couple of beers and say, yeah, those sound like pretty attractive ingredients for a job. Uh, the interesting thing is the more that we've built this community and, uh, and the products that, uh, the tech products that try and help people make these transitions, is the more we've realized there's no one size fits all. And our biggest challenge is creating almost like a dating profile where you say to someone, okay, so what have you done? What are you interested in? How can this platform expose you to the opportunities that you think are cool and, and fulfilling, not the ones that just Rob, Dom and Mikey and the rest of the escape th team think are? Um, I, I, I think that answered half of your question. The other half, which is, what is a great job? Um, I mean, I read a book called Drive by Dan Pink, and the subtitle is The Surprising Truth About What Motivates Us. And one of the main messages in the book is the three ingredients he considers uh, constitute fulfilling work are autonomy, mastery, and purpose. And when I look back on my corporate job, I had none of the three of those. I didn't control what I worked on, when, and where. Um, mastery, that's related to the skills that you're acquiring and do you value them? And the, f and the final one, and almost the biggest one for most people, is purpose. Do I really care about the output of my work? And I say the sweet spot for peop for most people would be something in the middle of those three factors. Mm, yeah, so I, I, I think a, a lot of people would uh, perceive it to be a luxury, right, to have purpose in your life and even maybe autonomy and 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 uh, and what if you know what if you have a family and you have that mm. mortgage and you have that student mm. loan you mentioned mm. and you're sitting in a in a job but it does pay the bills, mm. wouldn't it be irresponsible to? Kind of let go of that job, especially in a financial downturn or yeah, or difficult times. Sure, I mean the first thing to say is that clearly it's a luxury to be able to consider searching for fulfilling work. Um, you know Maslow's pyramid of needs. Um, at the bottom of the pyramid is security, comfort, uh, the ability to look after yourself and your loved ones. Now um, you take that stuff away and you just have the fulfilling work. That's not a very good pyramid, and you're going to be miserable either way. Um, so I think, for starters, it's important to acknowledge that myself and all of the people who subscribe to this philosophy are very fortunate. Um, the second thing I'd say is that I think if you d derive your sense of purpose, one of those three ingredients that we just mentioned, from stuff that's not related to your job, be it supporting your family, paying your mortgage, and those are your priorities, I think that's probably a, a very comfortable place to be in terms of alignment between um, your motivations, the job that you do, and what it allows you. I think the problem comes with when people look at their high-paid, comfortable, sensible corporate job and say, I don't feel like I have a single reason for doing this. Um, certainly people in their 20s might not have the mortgage, the wife, or the kids. And I'm the first person to acknowledge that it's much easier for people in the first decade of their careers to make a big transition. <coughs> But um, yeah, no, it's, I, I'm, I'm, I feel privileged to be able to seek fulfilling work um, and not have to worry. I mean, I certainly have to worry <laughs> about the financial side of things, but it was, I was in a position in my life and 
where I could take these risks and feel that I wasn't going to hurt anyone. But does this mean that that is not for everyone? That maybe for the top ten in the population or something like that that have the same uh, privilege that that you're talking about there, or, or do you think that it's broader than that? I mean, we sit down and talk about who escape is for, and it's not an elitist community. But um, typically, the people who subscribe to this philosophy are graduates who have then worked in the corporate world as a professional. So I don't know if that's the top ten percent. Maybe maybe it is, but certainly. That's where this feeling of almost like a lack of meaning and this sort of existential, what is all this for? Why am I? I'm so conscientious. I'm so ambitious. Why am I doing all of this? Now, I think there are lots of other jobs in other areas of the economy where there's the, <laughs> the same lack of meaning. And, you know, certainly um, one of the guys who won our, our, a coding scholarship through Escape the City Uh, to go and learn how to code Ruby on Rails at, at, at General Assembly. He was a gardener before he got that scholarship. So all sorts of people subscribe to our philosophy. And, and I, I guess the more open we can be, um, the better. Mm, excellent. But I want to talk to you for a second about um, you saying when you're stuck in the corporate job, you've got all the safety and securities. And the, you mentioned these blockers in your book, the things that are keeping you from doing the big transition, such as for finances, for example. Yeah. What about for you personally? What was your what was the biggest blocker for you and, and how did you overcome it? Okay, so um, interestingly, my biggest blocker was the same one that I struggled with when I was in consulting. Um, and that was imposter syndrome. Now, imposter syndrome is that nagging fear you have at the back of your mind, which is that someone's <laughs> probably in a white coat is going to come up to your cubicle, tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, really sorry, we made a mistake. You're not meant to be here. Now, fast forward a few years in the corporate world and I guess I'd got rid of a few of those demons and I'd realized, okay, I'm not bad at this. I got promoted. I kind of know what's going on. I can add value here. Um, the biggest blocker for me when the idea for escape was still just an idea was again imposter syndrome. It was, who am I to build this? Um, I'm only 20-something, I'm 27, uh, I need more experience. People are going to use this platform who are 10 years ahead of me, what are they going to think? Um, and it, you know, it's, very, it's a very effective way of sabotaging yourself. Um, and the way I got over it was, A, with the confidence uh, afforded to me by having a business partner who was in exactly the same position and saying, come on, we can do this. And B, by looking at the world and saying, This doesn't exist yet, and if we're not going to do it, who is? And why can't we get this idea out of our heads? Let's do it. And that's great that you've built a community for those people who don't exactly have that business partner sitting right, right there, right? You are the new business partner to help everybody. I guess along. I guess we got confidence from the fact that we were building it for our futures, our past, our previous selves. And we're like, okay, we feel like this. A lot of our peers and colleagues and friends feel like this. Let's let's pursue this idea and see if there's value there. Rob, I, I'm sure I'm really sure that you helped a lot of people with your movement. Uh, I, can, I can definitely see that also from the comments uh, on Twitter, etc. Um, have there also been examples where you know your advice was actually the wrong advice for a certain person, someone who quit their job and utterly regretted it, <laughs> and is today miserable because of this bad advice you gave him or her? Uh, the, the boomerang escape. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I think the first thing to say is that I, I'm really aware, almost more than anyone, I guess, of how um, the first glimpse of our concept can seem, like you said, irresponsible, a luxury. And we're really, really keen that the advice that we we seem to be in a privileged enough position to be sharing is really responsible advice. Um, so throughout the book, we talk about having a sustainable escape about how escape isn't just an event which after a bad week you quit, about how escape is a process. Um, so And so hopefully if people are paying attention that comes through. Um, and linked to that, the interesting thing about a concept called escape is you attract a lot of criticism because you kind of represent the thing that people would like to be possible but feel like isn't possible for very sensible, pragmatic reasons. And look, I've been building a business for four years. I know how hard it is. And I don't think escape is like, you know, if it was easy, we'd all, we'd all be living the life of, of meaning and of our dreams. It's not easy. And um, 
So to the second part of the question, are there people who the escape hasn't worked out? Definitely, definitely lots of people who have said, you know, I quit my job to start this idea. Um, I wanted to start a business in a certain area and after nine months, 12 months, it didn't work out and now I'm doing X. Um, interestingly, I've never heard anyone say I regretted leaving my corporate job. Even if the thing they went to go and do didn't work out, it was still, it was like ripping off the plaster. It was the, they're, they're now out. They're now in this new world. Um, and so one, one example that comes to mind is a guy called Ben. And Ben worked in a hedge fund after university for four years. And he then started a British clothing business. And the whole idea was British materials, British manufacturers, bright clothing, very sort of optimistic, uh, aspirational brand. And after two years of of creating these awesome knitwear products, the business folded. Now, uh, obviously that was a painful experience and ideally it wouldn't have happened. He then went to work um, as a sous chef in a one of London's top restaurants and now runs his own chicken and champagne restaurant in North London. <laughs> um, so, you know, clearly he knew that that environment that he'd started in wasn't for him. He's zigzagging his way through his through his 20s, he's now in his 30s. Um, I think if you were to get him on this call and say, do you regret the escape advice? Um, he'd say, absolutely not. I used that platform for connections. I used it to hire people. I then used it to, for support once my business did fold to help me figure out, well, am I alone? I'm the only person trying to figure out a sustainable career outside of the environment of big corporates. Um, Having said that, he might get on here and say, damn those guys, they got me, they got, they got me excited about something that didn't work out. Um, so, okay. yeah. But he hasn't so far. No, not yet. At least not to my face. <laughs> <laughs> we'll follow him on Twitter, see if we can find out something. Exactly. <laughs> Until then, we're going to say you're the good catalyst for his, his successful chicken and champagne, right? Thanks, guys. You're the nicest interviewers I've ever had the pleasure of speaking to. <laughs> Just getting warmed up. Oh, yeah, that, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm worried about. I, I do have a question, though, because I've worked in, in America for, uh, for a while, and it's very corporate, and you'll get traditional corporate business people saying, like, if you're not if you want to escape, you might not be tough enough for the corporate world, or you're just yeah. not strong enough and you can't yeah. handle it. Yeah. If, if you had just a minute to talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, well, what did you say? Oh, wow. Okay. Well, we'd get a beer first. <laughs> and then, I mean, I the think... Bribery. There you go. I, think, <laughs> I mean, so, obviously, our, our concept is inherently a challenge to that environment. Um, again, we're in, in, in and around the sensitivities of escape, we don't want to knock people who are in that environment and love it and get their meaning from that environment. You know, they're the lucky ones. They're earning massively above average salaries in an environment that makes them tick. And what I'd say to the person who, who challenged me and saying, you know, you guys aren't tough enough, you're hippies, you're opting out, I'd say, well, listen, that mentality is one of the reasons why so many people want to leave. <laughs> um, you know, and the interesting thing about the corporate environment, when you speak to people in HR and people in recruitment, they say, we're having to soften our approach, we're having to change this environment because people, we're burning through people and they're leaving and the smart people are leaving and the capable and ambitious people are leaving. Um, I'd also say that Having, you know, worked some really long hours on my startup and having read Martin's book, I'm aware of the importance, and, and to be honest, having burnt out a couple of times and hit rock bottom, I'm really aware of how important sustainable work practices are. And, you know, I've got friends who work in corporate law firms and they work crazy hours, but it's not an efficient use of time. So there's this macho, like, where were you at midnight and mentality, but how good was the work that they were delivering at midnight? And, you know, how, how how efficient is the output of that? You know, you're waiting for the other team on the other side of the deal to get back to you and you're sitting there, caffeine and Red Bull fueled. So I'd say to, to, to the challenge, I'd say, look, people who escape and the, and the word does seem like you're quitting, they're not opting out, they're opting in, but they're opting into a life of their choosing and a career that hopefully they're gonna be challenged in and build things that they're proud of. But they're, they're opting into something that isn't the mainstream path, but it's still gonna be a challenge. Mm. Right, yeah. and and with all that said, once you do escape, like yourself, what what's been the best part of your escape? Um, okay, so um, I had thought it was going to be freedom and independence. Um, there's not much freedom with my choice. Uh, I've 
I've chosen a different responsibility. I've been in London for four and a half years building this business. And the irony is a lot of the people who've used my platform have taken jobs I would have loved to have taken <laughs> out in Africa. You know, um, I thought it was going to be freedom. But it, it hasn't been. It's the, the, the best bit of my escape has been the satisfaction of choosing to work really hard on something I believe in and seeing the results of that work. Do you think that, uh, that do you think that would be another escape for you? That maybe you will even escape escape someday? You know, um, I do think so. Um, I'm trying to build a sustainable business here. Um, I've been doing it for five years in September. Um, who knows what will happen over the next two years if we manage to reach the targets that we're aiming at? Uh, this experience, you know, people say that your first business should be something you don't care too much about because it'll probably fail and. <laughs> But you'll learn valuable lessons, and sometimes it kills me that my first business is the one that I obviously care about deeply. Um, maybe I should have just started some kind of carpet importing business, and then you know spun it out into my second business that had worked. But um, yeah, I, I I think what I've learned here is is hopefully will serve me really well with whatever projects I move on to eventually. Hmm. Excellent, and. Uh if you have a second to talk to the people who might be watching this who are like thinking, I should escape, I need to escape. Yeah. Well, yeah. What, what would you tell them, like just to, to push them over the edge maybe? Um, okay, so I or, guess... Or help them, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what really helped me is looking up the ladder and in, in the corporate world, it's a very clearly defined ladder and, and as you guys know, the importance of role models and mentors is paramount. And if you look up that ladder and you see no one who's who, who you want to be like, no one whose life you aspire to. That's a pretty compelling message. Now, I don't think that means you then charge into your boss who you don't want to be like and say, hey, I'm out. I think what that means is you say, okay, that's the first push for me. I know I don't want to be here in X many months or X many years. And then you begin the process of discovery and transition, which is kind of the most exciting bit about this whole thing. It's, wow, this unknown landscape of uncertainty, which is, you know, scary as hell. But, um, once you've chosen your escape path and you're committed to it, that's going to be hard as well. But it's that middle bit where you're like, okay, I know I'm not going to do this, but I don't know what I'm going to do. And that's empty space. And that's rare in life. And I just say embrace it. And don't make any snap decisions. Just experiment and, and learn. And don't quit your job because it's your safety net for now. Mm. Yeah. That yeah, makes a lot of sense. I, I had my own escape as well. It was from McKinsey. Yeah. It's like almost 10 years ago now. I was there 15 months and I, I hated every <laughs> second of it. Um, as, as I normally say, it's, it's not their fault, right? It was my own fault um, because I, 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 you know, they were quite transparent about what they were, but I just thought that I was something, uh, someone different, <laughs> and kind of maybe even hoped that I was someone different. But but I'm not. I'm me. And uh, after 15 months, it felt very crappy, and I couldn't even sleep anymore. And then finally, I came to my senses and quit. And it immediately uh, led to a much uh, <laughs> lighter life um, even though I didn't know what to do just knowing that this is not my future and I you know I pulled the plug on that and that's okay just making that decision I slept like a baby and I started to open up and see opportunities again and within very soon I had a job that was bo uh, both uh, paying better and a lot more fun and people of course immediately thought that I was crazy when I quit the job without having a new one yeah. But it turned it really, really did turn out for the best. And it seemed to me that all those fears that I had and all this insecurity that I had in those difficult times uh, with McKinsey uh, was kind of blown out of proportion um, mm. and in, in, in enhanced by being in a culture that we're all that where everyone was telling each other how how grateful we should be, how lucky we were. Uh, but that doesn't really make any sense if you're not feeling that way, right? If you feel like shit and everyone tells you that you should be grateful uh, and you can't do it, then it's a, it's a strong sign, uh, in, in my view, that it's time to, to actually take responsibility for your life and do something else. Correct. Yeah. So, yeah, the things you guys are talking about are obviously very good reasons why you should think about escaping your job. But are, th are there any bad reasons, you would say, that you are just using as a scapegoat to want to escape? Um, I guess, I guess uh, Martin touched on something just then that struck me, which was um, he was talking about wanting to fit that environment and, and wanting to be someone that, and then he realized who he actually was. And I think um, throughout this process of trying to figure out our place in, 
in, in, in the world full stop, what's my life for? I think it's important to um, um, be self-aware. And, you know, it's really hard because we're very good at persuading ourselves of things, of our motivations and all the rest of it. And it's a daily battle. I'm certainly not finished with that journey. And I, I guess it's a lifetime's work. But um, I think if you're running away from something um, and don't necessarily know what you're running towards, um, I mean, from one perspective, if an environment's so painful, you need to leave it in order to have the space to see clearly again. But from another perspective, um, quitting as a form of, I don't know, as procrastination or, it, it's a difficult one. I think, I'll give you an example. Um, a lot of people do MBAs and a lot of people know why they're doing MBAs. They're very clear on what they're getting out of it, the network, um, the, 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 the validation, the skills. Um, but some people do MBAs because it's a very, very effective form of procrastination. Now, um, if you could use that as a proxy for quitting your job, and I wouldn't say go doing your MBA because you don't know what else to do, but you know you don't want to do your job because it's a very expensive way of spending 18 months. Um, and maybe one of the reasons you did that was just so people wouldn't be on your back and be like, hey, what's Rob doing? He's starting some crazy religion for people who want to escape their jobs. And that's what my dad thought escape was when we started <laughs> a, a religion. And I was like, you know, that's a great way of looking at it. Because it can't. Um, but if I'd said, you know, guys, I'm going to go and do a master's, all of the people close to me would have said, you know, well done. That's, that's very constructive. The reality was I just would have been hiding from something for, for a year or two. Mm. So I think maybe that's a bad reason for escaping. Uh, that's a good point. Oh, in, in you know, within psychology, there's um, there's a lot of theories around that the escape itself is not necessarily constructive and is mm. not necessarily leading to personal growth. Uh, often, you know, you can spend your whole life escaping from one thing to another, escaping one job for another job or one relationship for another relationship. And, and 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 it's mainly just to kind of avoid meeting yourself <laughs> and fronting confronting your own uh, demons and weakness and and and, and those things and um, and and the advice is that you often is that you should rather stay as, and and use it as an occasion to learn something about yourself mm. Mm. what what's, what's your experience uh, around that I, I completely agree to be honest um, I mean what I've found in my life so far, my adult life so far, is that the context changes, but the pattern, my pattern, is pretty similar. Does that make sense? So, you know, I, I'm quite, a, I'm a warrior by nature, so I tend towards um, anxiety. Now, I had anxiety in the, in the uh, corporate world, and I have it in my startup, mm -hmm. so I haven't run away from myself. Mm -hmm. um, in this environment, I have more control and more time and more space to look at that and say, okay, this is something I need to work on. I felt like the lack of control in the corporate environment made that harder. But um, yeah, I mean, um, isn't the essence of all addiction and all mental and emotional pain, you know, wanting to run away from something, wanting to be okay, wanting to be happy. Um, Seth Godin writes an excellent little book called The Dip. And the subtitle is when to quit and when to stick. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's really yeah. important to, to look at yourself and say, am I running away from something? Yeah. Uh, should I stay and see this one through? <clears throat> mm. So maybe you could, in a populistic way, sum it up to if, if you're running away from something or if you're running towards something. <laughs> yeah, t totally. But the, the problem is you don't always know what you're running towards. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is true. Yeah. yeah. That is true. There's a book called uh, uh, Wherever You Go, There You Are. It's, it's a, a, best, a great best-selling book uh, around right. this theme also that your own patterns will remain the same. <laughs> so even if you go to India or Africa or a yeah. complete different job or new relationship, you probably end, see that you end up uh, doing some of the, some of the old uh, patterns over and over again. Absolutely. And at the same time, I, I, I really uh, do uh, agree with your point also that that doesn't mean that we shouldn't strive for something better for ourselves, that we shouldn't sometimes pull the plug on things. It can't mm. be a reason to, mm. uh, you know, always stick with our first choice until we die in business. Abs <laughs> absolutely. And that, you know, again, it comes back to that luxury point is we are, we are freer and do have more choice than we realize. But when you're in that environment, it's hard to see what else is out there. So, you know, it's, you, if you have this freedom that, that if you're fortunate enough to have a good education and, and be able to engage with challenges in the world, I'd say you have a responsibility to choose and 
and have the bravery to change your choice if you realize it's the wrong one. But once you make a, a, the next choice or whichever choice you make that you, once you've made it, see it through um, because it, it's easy to keep flip-flopping. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Easier said than done though, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I think we're running up on the 30 minutes, a little bit over. So uh, I'd just like to take the last second just to thank you both for, for joining in on the interview, as well as thank you for the work that you're doing. You guys are really stepping out there and spreading a message and really trying to change, change the world, change the, you know, change the environment that people are expected to walk into and saying that there are options out there and you can be, you can be happy, you can find a purpose. And so thank you for that, for both of you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Rob. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys.